morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Wow, wow. It's a lot of people in here. <laughs> JK, JK. But good morning, everyone. I hope you all had a wonderful day, well, well week so far. Uh, today, well, this whole month is Women's History Month. So before I even um, pray to open up this service, I do want to take this time to ask a couple of you a question. I have one question. I'm going to come down and I'm going to ask you all a question. Well, not all of you, some of you. So I'm going to go to David here first. <laughs> so David, I have a question for you. Who is a woman in your life that you appreciate the most and why? Uh, my mom, because growing up as a come from a single parent home, she felt like Superman, but she did everything that she could do, so yeah, my mom. Okay, okay, praise God for that. Uh, I'm gonna come here over to Tia. Tia, tell us, tell us a woman in your life that you appreciate the most and why. Does it have to just be one woman? Okay, um, sorry. My mom, just for the simple fact of like, she really impacted me spiritually. And the fact is, I can really tell her anything. And I know like not a lot of people are blessed with like healthy households sometimes. So just for the simple fact, my mom, my nana. Yeah. Because, I don't know, it's just that love that she exudes from her soul. It's amazing. All right, all right. Praise God, praise God. Now I'm going to ask this man of God, Ryan Washington. This is the last person I'm going to ask. Ryan, uh, who is the woman in your life that you appreciate the most and why? I would have to say both of my grandmothers. Uh, the one on my, mom, my mother's side has been the most intentional and caring about whatever comes across. And the one on my father's side, she is the epitome of class and wisdom. And so being able to look up and see that even at the age beyond, we can still hold those characteristics is a wonderful thing. Wow, praise God, praise God for that. Well, with that being said, I hope you all have a wonderful day. But before I close out um, with prayer, well, the welcome, I do want you all to take this time to call, text, well, not call, of course, but text someone, a woman, um, your preference, whoever, text someone that you love them, whatever it is that you admire about them for this Woman's History Month. So with that being said, let us open up um, this program with a word of prayer. Loving Lord and our Heavenly Father, we just want to say thank you a million times. We say thank you for all that you do for us, oh God, big and small, oh God. Lord, in this moment, I pray that your Holy Spirit encamps and places his angels around this um, whole church building, oh God. Lord, I'm praying that we will be filled today with praise and worship and with the speaker that is going to come up, oh God. Lord, we thank you for all that you've done for us, big and small, once again. Bless us all, keep us all, forgive us of all of the sins that we've done, even of the ones that we're unaware of. And Lord, also bless all the women in this world, oh God. We've been hurt. We have had pain. So, Lord, I pray that you will bless us with the extra amount of blessing. Lord, we thank you once more, and we love you. In Jesus' most holy and precious name, I do pray. Amen and amen. Good morning, Oakwood. I'm going to say that again. Good morning, Oakwood. Um, you, you, can, you can do better than that. The sun is shining. We don't have no rain today. I'm going to do that one more time. Good morning, Oakwood. We're going to sing this song and get out your way. Before we do that, we're going to give God some praise. Is that all right? to be praised. Hallelujah. 
says, I lift my hands. I lift my hands. God is good. I'm going to need y'all to make some noise in the building. Rock side to side. Do something. But show God that you're thankful. Give God some praise this morning. He woke you up when he, no, nobody else could be waking up somewhere in the other part of the world. We going to give God some praise this morning. Someone, good morning, everyone. Uh, we trust that you've had a refreshing break, and now I want to welcome you back to the grind of academic discourses, research papers, and final exams, and so forth and so on. But today, we want to try to give away gifts, incentives for all of those who took the Life Corps survey. Uh, and we're going to try to give them all away. If not today, we'll have to finish it next week. Before the break, we tried to give some away, but many uh, of the students were not here. So we're going to make the attempt again. So at this particular time, what I would like to do is call you forward. Uh, the support team, Life Course support team, I appreciate the work and their dedication. Uh, but before we have the drawing, I would like for Chaplain Pelleggi to talk about the worship credits. All right, so as an incentive for everyone, whether you win something this morning or not, we just want you to know that everyone who participated in the survey, we're getting that information from, from the uh, responsible parties so that we can then enter worship credits in for you. So you'll receive up to 15 
worship credits just for participating in the survey. So we want to thank you for taking the time out of taking the survey. If you have not taken the survey, why don't you dig the link out of your email, just search Life Core Survey, and you can still have time to take the survey so that those credits can be applied to you before the semester is over. All right, thank you for your participation. Okay, okay at this time we're going to start the drawing of the names, uh, and we're going to do this about five minutes. After that, we have to uh, um, cut it short, okay? All right, we have Alicia Edwards. I have Jose, forgive me if I mispronounce the last name, Lache, Lash, Lache, Jose. Natea Dickerson. Do it a couple of more times. I believe this is a G rolls or a J. I think she's here. Kirk Ann Spence. Monique Peacock. An Oakwood University t-shirt she's going to get. Oakwood University paraphernalia. Yeah, Beat Buds we're going to give away next. This drawing is for the Beat Buds. Uh, we have Alexia Okorogu. Buford or Buddy Griffith? Melania Goodrich. All right, all right. Melania will get the beat box. Okay. Uh, your gifts are over here to my right and your left. My assistant is holding on to the gifts because you have to sign off before you receive them. Okay, let's do one more, Droy. This is for what? What prize is this? It's not the iPad, is it? <laughs> this is for the gift card. There's a gift card for Oakwood Farms. Shavisky White. Monica Thibault, Thib Thibault, Thibault. Corin Ferguson. Yeah, all right. All right. Okay, and I think that's just about it for today. Next week, we're going to finalize everything. We have an iPad to give away next week and some other T-shirts and gift cards to the form uh, that you can go to Oakwood Farm, that you can go and purchase any items in the store. Okay? That's it for this. I just need to make another. I'm just going to make another announcement as, as, as chaplain. Um, so, yeah, over the past couple of semesters, I've been very lenient, um, you know, because it's COVID. So definitely don't want anybody getting fined or anything like that. So... There were a lot of folk that did not attend chapel and I just, we just scrapped all fines. We scrapped all fines for the last couple of semesters. But now that things are getting back to normal, I need you to spread the word to your classmates because you know how it's been very low. And so uh, folk are gonna start seeing those fines come back. And I really don't want anybody to get fined regardless of COVID. So just please spread the word for folk to start attending again because this semester you will see fines start coming on if you're not attending anything or trying to find a way to make up any missed chapels. So please spread that word so we can work together to make sure that nobody goes home with any fines because that's the last thing we want to do. All right? God bless.
Good morning, student body. My name is Emil Parker, the Director of Alumni Relations. You know why I'm up here. You've seen me almost for three weeks. You all have had that break, and that's all good. And you all took a break in a lot of voting, too. But let me first talk to you about the QEP. That's the Quality Enhancement Plan. That $1,000 competition is still going. We're going to, we're extending it until Sunday, until Sunday. We had some submission or, or interest that was emailed to me. There was about three or four that never submitted. You have an opportunity. There's a window to do that. Uh, that's the QEP, submit your design and uh, we're gonna allow the student body, faculty, and staff to vote on all the entries on next week. You wanna have it in by Sunday. Now, let's talk about voting. If you've not seen this screen at least 50 times today, or every day, or at least 100 times a day, then you're not voting enough. We're 11th place right now. We have never been that low. It's our responsibility, one, each one of us, to vote every day. We are looking for vote champions. We need those who are gonna give us 50 or 100 votes every day. We can catch up, we can actually pass if we do almost a 14,000 vote day, every day. We can do that with just 200 of us. So, Donovan, give us some encouragement, man. Sure, yeah. My name is Donovan Williams. Good morning, everyone. I'm the USM president. I just want to underscore the importance that everyone participate and vote every single day. We asked for 10 in the beginning, but to give you a brief timeline of what voting has looked like since it opened March 1st. We started off strong, right, Mr. Parker? Yes, we did. Fourth Four. place. Fourth place. How many spots are there in each cluster? The 20? Uh, it's probably about 20. 20. Out of 20. We started off fourth out of other schools that have larger populations than we do. So we started out great. Fourth place. And after a few days, we dropped a couple spots, fifth, sixth. At the end of the first, we got to think, what, we were at ninth? Right. Today, we're now in 11th place. And if you don't know, the top 10 schools are the only schools that are going to receive prize money. The prize, the prize is go from 20000 to 75000 being the number one spot at $75,000 amount. So since we have dropped out of the top 10, we are not going to win anything now. If we not continue to vote, what are we doing, 2400 a day? Yeah, that's not, that's what not what we're doing so far is not going to cut Finance it. So major. we're going <laughs> to we're going to start putting out some incentives. USM is working on some things. We've been posting every day on our page. Um, the alumni, they have a page as well. I think it's just like some kind of music page that they have. That's they right. post daily. But we really need you guys to vote every single day more than 10 times because what we've done so far is not working for us. We're in that 11th spot. So we're out of the money right now. Um, so I really want to encourage you all, please vote, please vote. We're going to share the link every day. You can find it on the OU uh, underscore USM Instagram place. So please vote for the Home Depot Retool Your School Challenge. We have actually set ourselves up for a God miracle. We're comeback kids. We can do this. Just vote. Vote every day. Give us 50 to 100. Thank you. God bless you. Good morning, good morning. Okay, I am back, I am back. I do want to give an important, an important announcement. Uh, Campus Ministries will be interviewing March 21st for these following uh, positions. AYM Director, Ignite Director, Reach Director, Chapel Director, and all Chaplain Assistant positions. Once again, Campus Ministries will be interviewing on March 21st for the AYM Director position, Ignite Director, Reach Director, Chapel Director, and all Chaplain positions. The application can be found on the OSLM website at www.ouoslm.com under resources. And another, another thing I do want to announce is that tomorrow is the last day to purchase your banquet ticket uh, for the USM. I don't think it's a USM banquet, but for the banquet, um, yes, it is the USM banquet, sorry. Um, for the USM banquet for this school year, we didn't have a banquet for the last two years, I believe. So you all do want to show up and show out, show, come with your best dress, um, makeup done, hair cut well nice and everything, sharp and everything. So the last day that you have to purchase your tickets are, is tomorrow. So please do that. I'm not entirely sure of the time. 
5.30 p.m. 5.30 p.m. is the last time uh, that you are able to purchase your tickets. All righty, see y'all. Once again, uh, at this point, at this moment, Jesus help me. At this moment, we are having, we're about to have our speaker of this hour, uh, Taurus Montgomery. He is from Benton Harbor, uh, Michigan, and we are going to have him to come, I believe. So if you all can clap it up for him and give him that awkward welcome. Man, it's good to be here at Oakwood University, honored uh, for the privilege and opportunity to share with you guys today. Uh, I live in Benton Harbor. I just want to be clear. I live in Benton Harbor. I pastor in Benton Harbor, uh, but I'm from Alabama. Yeah, uh, from Alabama. I was born and raised uh, in Mobile, Alabama, to be exact. And so it's good to be not just back here at Oakwood, but it's good to be Good to be back home as well. Listen, I'm going to get right into uh, the message today. We have some slides that are going to come up on the screen uh, because today I want to talk to you about the greatest uh, university ever. All right? I want to talk to you about the greatest university ever. Uh, could you? There we go right there. The greatest university ever. Do me a favor. Just bow your heads and pray with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I'm grateful. I'm thankful. I'm honored. I'm humbled to be able to stand before your people at this moment. And so I'm praying right now, God, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be acceptable in your sight and encouraging to your people. This is my prayer in Jesus' name, amen. Look, I've had the opportunity to, uh, to travel, right? Uh, for the last you know, 15, 20 years, I've had the opportunity to travel uh, across the country. And as I've, as I've gone across the, tr across the country, I've seen, you know, I've visited schools, I've spoken at schools, and, and, and there's a lot of school pride, right? There's a lot of school pride, uh, you know, that people have, particularly for their college, right? Particularly for their college. And so, when you look at the United States map, right, you'll see, you know, there's a lot of different schools, there are a lot of different colleges uh, that, are, that are across this country, and people rep hard for their college, Right? They rep real hard for their college, right? And so when you're talking about, you know, schools, schools try to position themselves uh, to be known for certain things, right? So whether you're talking about Johns Hopkins University, if you're a medical student, you want to go to Johns Hopkins University, right, because they got a great medical program, or maybe you want to go uh, to Harvard University, right? You want to go to Harvard uh, or law school, or, or maybe, maybe you want to go to Howard, right? Maybe, maybe that's your, your school of choice, and, and people rep it real hard, right? Uh, if you're trying to go to the NFL, then you're probably going to go to the University of Alabama, right? If you're trying to go to the NBA, there are certain schools that you want to go to, and Duke is one of those schools, right? And so you have you have, you have schools schools that try to, you know, position themselves as the best at this or the best at that. And then you have, you know, our beloved Oakwood University, right? Listen, I rep Oakwood real hard. Wherever I go, as a matter of fact, when I was at Andrews, I went to Andrews as well. When I was at Andrews, you know, we had a, we had a, a, a couple of us from Andrews. We, met, we, had, we had these t-shirts made that said, uh, uh, Andrews for now, Oakwood for life. Right? And we rep, we rep those t-shirts when we went to basketball games, and, and so we wore, we wore those things proud, right? And so I've been through various schools, but here's what I came to tell you today. What I came to tell you today is that Andrews University, or even Oakwood University, is not the greatest university ever. Listen, I'm here to tell you today, I'm here to tell you today that Oakwood University is not the greatest university. In fact, I'm in school right now working on my doctorate at Duke University. I love Duke University. I love Duke basketball. I love the game. But I'm here to tell you today that Duke University is not the greatest university ever. 
It's not Harvard. It's not Loma Linda. It's not, it's not it, any school that you can think of. It's, it's, it's not the greatest university ever. Oakwood changed my life. Like God used Oakwood to change and transform my life in so many ways. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about that. But I'm here to tell you today that there is another school that is the greatest school ever. It's called AU, but it's not Andrews University. Let me tell you, the greatest school ever is what I call Adversity University. Adversity University, let me tell you why it's great. It's great because the faculty at Adversity University, God is president, Christ is professor, Holy Ghost is tutor. It's the greatest because, watch this, the tuition is free, but it still costs you something. It's the greatest university because, listen, listen, students drop out all the time, but enrollment is always up. It's the greatest university, watch this, because recruiting never stops. Here's what you have to understand. You might not get accepted into Meharry College, uh, Meharry University. You might not get accepted into uh, 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 Andrews, or you might not get accepted into your favorite school, your favorite university, but you have to, at some point in your life, go through adversity university. And it's free. But here's the thing, guys. Here's the thing. When you go, when you go, there are four core classes that you have to take. Just four. You get through these four, you can get to wherever you got, you're trying to go. You get to these four, I guarantee you, you will become all that God created you to be. If you get through these four classes... Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I'm going to tell you about those four classes today, right? But here's the thing, right? You, 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 you don't even have to go to Adversity University. It'll show up to you. And it showed up to me. It showed up to me. Go to the next slide for me. Here's the, here's, here's, here's the first class you got to take. The first class is the intro class. It's Adversity 101. And here's what you learn. What you learn is... Even though it doesn't feel good, adversity always works for your good. Adversity is a good thing. So when you find yourself going through your go-through, it might be hard for you to receive it at the time, but it's good for you. Let me tell you how I know it's good for you. It's, I know it's good for you because one night I was sleeping at Versa University, came to my house and knocked on the door. Actually, it was through my little brother. My brother was knocking on the door, and he said, Tars, Tars, get up. The house on fire. Get up. It's 2 o'clock in the morning. I'm knocked out of sleep. And have you ever been in, in, in such a deep sleep that when you hear somebody calling your name, like you, you think you dream? Anybody ever been there? Like the sleep is real good. So I'm hearing, I'm hearing like my name or I'm hearing the knocking, but I'm sleeping good. It's 2 o'clock in the morning, and so I, 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 I ignore it. But I hear it again. Boom, 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 boom. Taurus, get up. The house on fire. Get up. Now I know it's real. I jump up and I and I and I, and I threw on I threw on the, uh, I had some black shorts on, some black t uh, black black socks on. I had on a white beater. Why they call it a white beater? I'm still trying to figure. I don't beat my wife, right? I had I had on I had on this tank top T-shirt. That's another word for it, right? I had on this tank top T-shirt and I ran outside. And now I'm outside, my little brother outside, and we're watching the only place we call home go up in flames. And for the next two or three weeks, we bouncing around from one house to another house, one family member house to another family member house to another family member house. You see, I, I got a whole bunch of brothers, right? It's, it's, it's like a lot of us. My dad got nine kids, like seven different women. That's a whole other story, right? That's a song back in the day called Papa Was a Rolling Stone. Wherever he laid his hat, somebody know what I'm talking about. So we bouncing around, right? And every family member house that we go to, we eating up all the food. So we can't, you know, like family, you start, really, you, start, you start figuring out who family is real quick. When you start eating up everything in the refrigerator and they still let you stay, oh, that's family, right? That's like real family. But unfortunately, not only was it a lot of us, but, but, but we also, you know, uh, we, we, you know, there wasn't a whole lot of space. So we go to the next family member house. All the while, we still in school. I'm like 16 years old, right? 16, 17 years old. I'm in the 10th grade when this happens. And then... We got a phone call, and this phone call was from my mom's friend that she went to high school with back in the day. She said, she said, Trude, I, I, I heard you guys 
house burned down and you need a place to stay, she said, look, you guys can come and live with us. And we stayed with this family for two years. And here's what you got to understand. I didn't grow up in a church. I started smoking weed when I was 12 years old. From 12 to 19, I'm smoking, I'm drinking, I'm robbing people, breaking their houses, doing all kind of crazy stuff. My house burning down ended up being the best thing ever happened in my life because when my house burned down and we moved in with this family, they just happened to be seven-day Adventist Christians. That was the first time that I learned that there was a group of people who go to church on the wrong day. First time. That was the first time that I learned that that, that, that that was a group of people that instead of eating ham sandwiches, they eat wham sandwiches. First time. First time. But that was also the first time that I saw a group of people who prayed together on Friday evenings. That was the first time I saw a group of people who, who, who asked God to bless their food every time they sat down. And they started telling me about this school called Oakwood. What I'm trying to tell you is that just because the adversity doesn't feel good, it's always going to work for your good. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8 and verse 28, for we know that all things work together for good for those who love God and are called according to this purpose. But here's what I need you to understand. At the time, I didn't love God. I didn't have no relationship with God. I didn't know God. But God is so good that God knows that if you just, if I can just get you in the right environment, you're going to change. If I can get you in the right space, you're going to have a relationship with me, and I'm going to do some things in your life that's going to blow your mind. I don't know what you find yourself going through. Adversity comes in many ways. It might not be your house burning down. It might not be you bouncing around from one place to the next. It could be a broken up, a broken relationship, a bad relationship. It could be something you put yourself in. It could be a bad decision that you made. It could be some circumstances that occurred in your life that you didn't have any control over. Whatever it is, I need you to be able to step back and say, this is for my good, even though it doesn't feel good. So you sit in that class, Adversity University. I think I got a picture up here, right? This is the family who let me and my family come. Go to the next slide, for who let my, me and my family come and live with them. Now watch this, watch this. Matter of fact, some of y'all might know uh, 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 Professor Julian uh, Waddell. Yeah, I live with them. Me and my brothers live with them. It was, it was his family who let us come and live with them. And by the grace of God, here I am today, right? Go to the next slide for him, go to the next slide for him. So look, 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 the Bible says my suffering, this is uh, Psalm 119, verse 71. My suffering was good for me, says David, for it taught me to pay attention to God's decrees. Started going to church. It was boring as I don't know what, just to be 100 with you, right? Me and my brother, we falling asleep in the back. But the church had a basketball team and a pretty girl. I had some motivation to go to church now. Right? God, God, God was using a variety of ways to teach me to pay attention to his decrees. February 1st, 2001, on a Thursday morning, I dropped down on my knees and I said, God, whatever you want to do in my life, have your way. And at that moment, I felt this call to go, to, to go, to, 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 to go into ministry. I, f- I felt like I was supposed to be a pastor. I'm, I'm, I'm my daddy not a pastor, my mama not a pastor, nobody in my family a pastor, nothing like that. But I felt God telling me, this is what I want you to do. And, and of course you got the church in your ear saying, you, get, you gotta go to Oakwood. Right? So when I came to Oakwood, I entered into the next class, right? I entered into the next class. Go to the next slide for me. I entered into the next class, and the next class in Adversity University is Formation 201. Here's what it teaches. Adversity is character formation for the destination. Adversity is character formation for the destination. So what, 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 I, what do I mean by that? Listen, I remember when I first got, go to the next slide for me. I remember when I first got the letter in the mail, right? I got the letter in the mail, and the, and the letter was like, uh, you know, I, I was looking, because I had applied to Oakwood, and so I'm ripping the letter open. I can't wait. Uh, I'm, looking out, I'm looking out the window to see if, 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 uh, if the mailman didn't deliver the mail. I open up the mail, and I get letterhead Oakwood University. I'm excited. Right? But when I started reading that I was accepted, it also said that I was accepted on academic probation. Like, I ain't even showed up yet. Right? So, so what happened was, I went, I, when I graduated high school, I went to a junior college to go play basketball, but I kind of, you know, was doing some crazy stuff while I was there or whatever, and so my GPA ended up being like a 1.9. 
So when I transferred, right, when I transferred to Oakwood, uh, they, they said, you know, this thing, uh, you know, academic uh, probation. Now, listen, where I'm from, I'm thinking they're going to send me to jail. I'm going to be in trouble with the law because of probation, right? So I came in with a 1.9. You just saw the picture. I came in with a 1.9. By the grace of God, I graduated with a 3.5. Look, I started, listen to, listen to me, guys. The formation took place because I, you know, I wasn't stupid, I wasn't dumb, I wasn't retarded, I wasn't like, I wasn't, uh, 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 uh. what I didn't have was the discipline. So I stayed at the library now. I'm on academic probation, I stayed at the library. I went to the, uh, I don't know if they call it the same, uh, the same thing, but it was a computer lab over there. A writing lab and they showed you how to write correctly. Right, they showed, they, 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 and so I, I hung out in those places. And, and the reason why that was necessary, the reason why that was important is because God was saying, I'm trying to prepare you to get to a place where you can write well. Because there are books inside of you. There are proposals inside of you. There are grants inside of you. And you're going to need these skills that I'm trying to give you right now because these skills are going to help you to be a blessing to the people that I'm trying to get you to reach at the destination where I'm trying to take you. So it's more than a, it's more than a 10 page paper. Are oh, you hearing me? It's more, it's, it's more than just a group project, right? It's preparation for the destination. Now watch this, go to the next slide for me. Go to the next slide for me. So I told you that like, like God said, look, there, there, there's books inside of you, there, there, there are things inside of you. When I came to Oakwood, I got into a relationship, real bad relationship, man. She was abusive to me, right? Her name was Sally Mae. She was abusive. She took advantage of me. I was young. I ain't know no better. But my, my folks didn't have the money either, right? We didn't have the money. Grew up rats and roaches in the crib, lights off two years, gas off two years, right? Water off and on, went to school, didn't have a whole lot of, you, know, you, you follow what I'm saying? So I had, I had to get into, into this relationship with her. And that relationship was a part of the struggle. So let me tell you the story real quick. Let me tell you a story real quick. So what happened was when I, I got to, I'm, I'm, I'm skipping this. Maybe at some point I can come back to Oakwood and tell you the whole story. But let me, let me, let me, let me give you the, the nugget of it, right? Go back to the book for me. So I wrote this book, and when I finished writing the book, uh, 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 God basically said, don't publish it. That's like, that's like getting pregnant, and then God said, don't have the baby. But God knew what he was doing because before the book was ever published, long story short, I, I sent my book to somebody who read my book without telling me that they were going to send the book to somebody else. There's somebody else that read the book. Hear what I'm telling you. There's somebody else that read the book. They felt inspired by God to do something to bless me and my household. My household had a struggle of, that's my wife and I, we had $188,000 worth of student loan debt. This person who read the story, who read the book, they said, we just feel like God wants us to bless you. And so they wrote a check for $188,000 paid off all my loan. Did you hear what I just said? Let me throw in. Look, they didn't just pay off my loan, but they paid off my car. We had, we had just bought a car, paid, made like three payments on it. Twelve grand, eh? They ask, what, what, what other debt do you have? We, oh, we got some, got some credit card debt. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. What else you got? Well, shoot, that, I'm like, shoot, my mama got some debt. <laughs> my brother don't got some debt. Right? Listen to what I'm telling you. When I was going through it, when I was standing in those long lines, when I was struggling trying to figure out where this money gonna come from, when I had to, when I had to do the Parent Plus loan, and when the Parent Plus loan didn't work no more, and I had to do the signature loan that busts you in your head until you see the white meat, and, 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 and you got interest rates that's through the roof, when I was going through that whole process, I didn't know, but God said, it's all good. It's forming you, it's shaping you. There's some, there's some things on the other side that I'm gonna bless you with. Stay focused. Might not feel good, but it's for your good. 
From that class, I had to learn another, I had to go to another class, go to the next slide for me. I had to go to another class. This, this class was Relatability 301. Relatability 301, what does that mean? What does that mean, right? Well, in this class, here's the lesson. In this class, the lesson is simple. Go to the next slide for me. The lesson is adversity increases authenticity and relatability. People can connect with people who've been through something. Now, I'm not telling you to go jump in the fire just so you can say, I've been through the fire. But adversity university is going to come to you because there are people in your life. In fact, many of you, if not all of you, have already been through some things that you, you, you've already experienced some pain. You've already had some trials and some tribulations. You've already gone through some stuff. But, 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 but what I need you to understand is that God now wants to use that because there's a group of people out there that you can relate to based on that. Okay, let me tell you, right? So the first time I went to a juvenile detention center was in South Bend, Indiana. I was a student here. I was, I, I, when, I, when I got here, I was a part of this group <coughs> called NAPS. You guys probably heard of NAPS before, right? So I was a part of this group, and we went to, this, we went to South Bend, Indiana, and when we get to South Bend, Indiana, uh, we go to a juvenile detention center. I'm brand new, right? Brand new here, fresh, like fresh Christian, just came, gave my heart to Jesus, on fire for God, want to do whatever God tells me to do. We go to this juvenile detention center, and it was my very first time ever speaking in front of a group of students, right? A group, a group of kids like that. And so when I get there, now, I wasn't told until the moment that, hey, we want you to get up and, and talk. I'm like, okay, let's go. Right now, mind you, when we walk inside, we, we, we walk inside, you know, the kids kind of like, man, what y'all, man, what y'all going to talk to us about, man? Got these uniforms on, man. They, they mean mug and they looking like super hard. I got up and I spoke for like 10 minutes. Listen, all glory to God. This ain't Taurus Montgomery. I spoke for like 10 minutes. They crying. I want to, I want to follow Jesus. I want to give my heart to God. Man, God is amazing. I, I repent. I'm at a juvenile detention center. I've been to a juvenile detention center. Like, I've been stealing out the mall. You going. I, 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 I felt the embarrassment. I felt the shame. I felt the, I ain't going nowhere. I felt the, you ain't going to be nothing in life. I felt that before. And so, because, I, 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 because, 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 God, because God brought me out of those experiences, he gave me something to be able to relate to and connect with these guys. This is why when we show up, go to the next slide for me. This is why when my church going out into the community, go back, go back, you missed one. Uh, go back, yep, yep. This is why when my church go out to the community and we have programs in the community, not at the church, we will have programs in the community where the kids are. This is why they are listening. This is why they're paying attention because God says, listen, every negative experience that you've been through, I'm going to use it to increase your relatability so you can share the gospel in a way that young men can understand. I got a friend, she has, a, she has an organization or a business called Pain Unwasted. I love it. So any pain that you have ever experienced in your life, God says, we're going to use that. We're going to use that because that's going to help you, that's, that's going to humble you and help you be real about your, your own issues and struggles, and it's going to help you to be able to relate to the people that I've called you to reach. Now look, I want, I'm here recruiting today, not just, for, not just for Adversity University. I'm not just recruiting for Adversity University. I'm also recruiting because there is a summer opportunity. Go to the next slide for me. There's a summer opportunity that I want to give you uh, to come and work with me and my team at my church, we do some amazing outreach during the summertime. And so if you're looking for an experience, an opportunity to come, and you're interested in it, just text RISE UP right now. Text RISE UP right now to this uh, phone number right here. Text RISE UP right now. Fill out a quick little application, name, phone number, that type of deal or whatever, and we'll be in touch with you, right? I just want to give that opportunity to somebody who needs that opportunity, right? If you're interested, you want to do something different this summer, you want to make a change this summer, uh, we have a compensation that come along with it as well. You're not going to get rich from it, amen. But, but, but we're going to put something in your pocket by the grace of God. So if you're interested, make sure that you text RISE UP right now uh, uh, to that 
to that, to that, to that phone number. Go to the next slide. I'm wrapping this thing up, guys. Go to the next slide. Look, here's the last, here's the last class that you're going to have to take at, 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 uh, 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 at Versus the Universe. Here's the last class right here. The last class is Exaltation 401. In other words, in other words, this class will teach you how to get to the top. And here's how you get to the top. Humiliation comes before exaltation. Where there is no struggle, there is no progress. Humiliation, suffering, going through it, looking bad, looking crazy sometimes, looking stupid sometimes, before you get to the top. Now, let me, let me, let me illustrate that, and then, and then, and then, and then we're done. Watch this. So, so, so I, I was blessed, man. Uh, uh, I was blessed a couple years ago to get a, to get a deal with Nike, right, to get a deal with, it was a speaking engagement I got uh, with Nike. So there was a lot of issues happening in Chicago. Uh, anybody from the shot? There's a lot of issues happening in Chicago. Uh, and, and it was like crazy summer, crazy weekend. You had like multiple shootings on multiple shootings on multiple shootings. Like it was crazy. And so Nike has like a, 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 a uh, a headquarters, if you will, in Chicago. And so they was looking for some speakers, like some motivational speakers to come and talk to the, to the, uh, to the basketball players, to the student athletes that they have to come to their program. And so it was, it was me and two other guys that were supposed to go. I was going to go first, and then these other two guys were going to go, right? And so now, the day before, I get this long email. They're giving me the whole script and all that type of stuff. But for whatever reason, I didn't get to check it until the day of. So I check it, and I read, like, like, right then and there, like, man, oh, Scottie Pippen going to be here. So that, 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 that's kind of like saying Steph Curry going to be here for y'all. Right? LeBron James going to be here. Like, like Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen. Like, so, so, so when I, uh, and, and here's the crazy part. I got to go up after Scottie Pippen. So I'm like, oh, my Lord, Jesus, God, please bless me in the name of Jesus, God. I need you to help me. Like, I'm praying prayers like I ain't never prayed before because I, I ain't trying to be all fanned out. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm up there. One of the, one of his autographs. I ain't trying to be, I ain't trying to be in that mode, right? So, 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 so Scotty Pippen goes up. Scotty Pippen does his thing. And uh, go to the next slide for me. Uh, yeah, that go, to, go, go, go back, go back. Yeah, that go to the picture right there, right? So this is after I spoke. Go to the next slide for me. So, 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 now, so now I got to get up and I got to speak. Go to the next slide for me. I got to get up and I got to speak. And hear me, hear, hear me, guys. Listen to me. I got up and I spoke. And as soon as I started talking, my mouth started getting dry. My lips started getting chapped. And, 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 and now, mind you, mind you, you might not be able to tell on this picture, but, but I'm actually close to these guys. In fact, there was a young man, there was, there was, there was a young man, you know, I'm, I'm like right here, and, and, and two of them are, are, are sitting here together, and I could tell, I could see one saying to the other, man, his lips chapped. <laughs> like, my, I'm talking about my tongue gets stuck to my throat. I'm talking about like, it, I'm, it was like crazy. I'm, I'm like, oh my goodness, man, I, but I kept going, right? I kept on going, I kept on speaking, I kept on talking. And when I was done, man, I was like, yo, I can't believe, man, that was the worst thing, that was my, like the worst speech ever. When it's all over with, I go sit down next to Scottie Pippen. He say, man, man, that was powerful. Say, yo, man, you have a message that can transform lives. The lady who was the host, she worked for ESPN. She was a sports analyst for ESPN. We go to the green room. She give me this big old hug like, wow, you just don't know how that spoke to me. We sat there for about 30 minutes. She opened up her whole life to me, telling me about just the depression she'd been going through. I'm, what just happened? I spoke for like 10 minutes, 12 minutes. They give me my check, praise God. I leave and go home. When I get home, I get a call, a call from the booking agent dude who, you know what I'm saying, who helped set everything up or whatever. He asked me how I go. I said, man, you know, it, it, it was all right, man. I think I, you know what I'm saying, I could have done better or whatever. He said, well, listen, man, I just got off the phone with Nike, and they told me to cancel all the other speakers that they had because they want Taurus Montgomery to come back. Wow. 
So I go back. I'm trying to figure out, yo, who did this? Who said they want me to come back? Who was in charge of that? So I, I, you know, I didn't even know who to talk to. So this guy comes up to me and he says, hey, man, listen, um, I know, you know, I ain't, I ain't trying to infringe on what you do or whatever. But listen, man, I'm here hired by Nike because I have to create a commercial for Nike. And I'm just wondering if we can use your, your voice. We can t- take images of you and video of you and, 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 and make this like the center focus of the commercial. I said, huh? I'm trying to keep my cool, though, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know. And I said, well, man, listen, do you, would you happen to know why is it that uh, uh, they brought me back here? And he said, listen, man, I don't know, but it's obvious to me. He said, when I asked the kids, when I interviewed the kids, what's been the best part of this time that you've been here? And they say the trainers, they had some NBA trainers, like trainers that work with NBA guys and training those guys, whatever. They said the trainers and the speaker. And so, man, look, I just want to know if I can use your stuff and put you in the commercial and have you in the commercial and your voice in the background so I can do this. I ain't just trying to do no regular thing with them playing basketball and sweat. I want you to be the focus of it. I said, well, listen, man, let me just call my mom and tell her we made it real quick. Go ahead. <laughs> right? So they did the commercial. They made the commercial and all that. What am I telling you? What I'm telling you is this. Sometimes God will take you through what seems to be a, well, what is a humiliating experience. Because I had prayed. I had prayed. I said, God, I, look, this was, this, this was before I showed up. This was before I knew Scotty Pippen was there. I said, God, I want to develop a relationship. I don't want this to be a one-time thing. But I need you to do it in such a way that I can't take the credit for it. No problem. Chap lips. So listen, even Jesus, go to the next slide for me. The Bible says, even though Jesus was God's son, he learned obedience from the things he suffered. I had a a professor here at Oakwood used to always say, in God's way, in God's kingdom, the way up is down. Because Jesus suffered, the Bible says, because Jesus went through what he went through, because Jesus was humiliated, because of those things, the Bible says that at the name of Jesus, uh, every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So you want to get to the top. Go to the next slide for me. You want to get to the top. You got to go through adversity 101. You got to have formation 201. You got to go through, you got to take relatability 301. And you got to spend some time in exaltation 401 where you learn that humiliation comes before exaltation. Listen, I got this thing on the, on, the, on the screen real quick one more time for those who may have missed it. Go to the next slide for me. We're wrapping it up. Look, if, you want, if you're looking for an experience, an opportunity uh, to serve, to grow in your leadership, uh, reach out. Send a text message, and we're going to take care of you, all right? But I want you to do me a favor, right? This is the last thing I'm going to say, and, we're going to, and then we're done. Last thing I'm going to say when we're done. This is my challenge to you. My challenge to you is stay in school. You stay in Oakwood, yeah, do that. But when you're going through adversity university, don't drop out. Because there are some lessons that God is trying to teach you for where he's trying to take you. Father in heaven, In the name of Jesus, Lord, we're grateful and thankful that you established Adversity University to teach us to be the men of God and the women of God that you created us to be. And so it's my prayer, God, that when we find ourselves going through it, we'll stick to it and keep on going. I pray that you would bless every student, every faculty. I pray that your spirit will move in their lives as they finish out this semester. May they finish strong with their eyes focused on you. This is my prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. And all the people of God who believe say amen and amen. Come on, can you give God a hand clap of praise? Can you give God this blessed name? Bless his name. God bless you guys. Hello, hello. Let's give Brother Montgomery another hand clap. Let's bow our heads for closing prayer. 
God, dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for waking us all up this morning, God, and giving us another day, Lord, to commune together on this early morning chapel, Father God. Lord, I ask that you help us to trust you. You said, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not on thy own understanding and all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. So God, we're claiming this verse today and I'm asking you, Lord, that you help us to believe you, to trust you, to be obedient to you, God, to listen to your will and your way because God, you said that all good things come from you and no one else, God. So Lord, I thank you, God, for this message. I thank you, even though it's hard for us in the moment to understand for the adversity that you use for our good, God, because you said that all good things work out for those who love the Lord God, that a righteous man may fall, and but we will get up, Father God. So Lord, I thank you, God, and I ask that you help us, Lord, as we go throughout this week and the rest of our lives, God, to follow you, to trust you, God, and more than anything, to be more like your son, Jesus Christ, that we may make it into the kingdom and augment the kingdom, Father God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.